In this presentation, we are going to discuss one example based on modeling of electrical systems. So, let's get started. Find the transfer function of the series RLC circuit shown in the below figure. A series RLC circuit is given to us in which we have a resistance R, an inductor with inductance L and a capacitor with capacitance C. The input voltage is Vi of t and the output voltage which is measured across the capacitor is V out of t. And we can see that these three elements are connected in series. Because we can see that the current across these three elements will be the same. And hence this circuit is called as the series RLC circuit. And in this example, we need to find out the overall transfer function of the series RLC circuit. So moving on to the solution, we know that if we want to calculate the overall transfer function of an electrical network, firstly, we have to convert that network into its S domain. So if we convert this network into its equivalent Laplace domain, then the network will look like this. The input voltage is V i of S. The impedance of resistor is R. The impedance of inductor is S L and the impedance of capacitor is 1 over SC. The output voltage which is measured across the capacitor is V out of S. And we need to calculate the overall transfer function which is the ratio V out S over V i S. In this circuit, we know that these three elements are present in series and we can calculate this output voltage by using the voltage divider rule. So firstly, we will calculate this output voltage across this capacitor by using the voltage divider rule. So this is our method number one in which we will apply the voltage divider rule. So we have V out of S which is the output voltage equal to 1 over SC which is the impedance of this capacitor over R plus SL plus 1 over SC which is the total impedance of this complete circuit multiplied with VI of S which is the input voltage. Let us check this one more time. We have three elements present in this circuit. The first one is the resistor having impedance R. The second one is the inductor having impedance SL and the third one is the capacitor having impedance 1 over SC. If we want to calculate the total impedance of this circuit, then it will be R plus SL plus 1 over SC since these three elements are present in series. Now, if we want to calculate the output voltage measured across this capacitor, then it will be equal to V out S equal to 1 over SC, which is the impedance of this capacitor over the total impedance multiplied with the input voltage, which is V i of S. Now, if we take the LCM in the denominator, we will have V out of S equal to 1 over SC over R S C plus s squared multiplied with lc plus 1 over sc which is multiplied with vi of s. Now we can see that this term in the denominator and this 1 over sc will get cancelled and we will have the overall transfer function v out s over vi s equal to 1 over s squared multiplied with lc plus r s c plus 1 and this is the overall transfer function of a series rlc circuit and we have calculated this by the use of voltage divider rule. So in this way, we are done with the calculation of transfer function of this series RLC circuit by using the voltage divider rule. We will now move on to the method number two in which we will model this electrical network. That is, we will convert this series RLC circuit into a signal flow graph and then we will calculate the overall transfer function by using the Mason's gain rule. Moving on to method number two, which is the calculation of transfer function by using the signal flow graph. So let us consider the given electrical network one more time. We have a series RLC circuit in which the impedance of resistance is R, the impedance of inductor is SL and the impedance of capacitor is 1 over SC. The input voltage is V i of S and the output voltage which is measured across the capacitor is V out of S. And now we will try to convert this complete electrical network into its equivalent signal flow graph. And for that sake, we have to calculate the branch current equation and the node voltage equation. So let us assume the current in this loop equal to IS as we know that the current in these three elements will be the same. 
Moreover, the output voltage is V out S, which is measured across this capacitor, and hence the voltage at this particular node will be V out of S. Now, we have to write the equations for this branch current IS and this node voltage V out of S. So, firstly, let us try to write the equation for this branch current IS. We know that this current IS is same in all the three elements, as the three elements are present in series. And that's why we can say that the current in this resistor and this inductor is IS. Now, in order to find out the current IS, we can apply the Ohm's law in this branch. We know that the voltage at this terminal is VI of S and the voltage at this node is V out of S. And the total impedance of this branch will be R plus SL. So, we can write I is equal to V i of S minus V out of S over R plus S L. Since this resistor and the inductor are present in series, we can add the impedances of these two elements and hence we have I is equal to V i of S minus V naught of S which is the voltage difference between these two nodes over the total impedance R plus S L. Now, if we split this term, we have I s equal to V i of s over R plus S l minus V out of s over R plus S l and this is the branch current equation. Now, we will move on to the calculation of this node voltage. V out of s is the voltage drop across this capacitor and we know that the voltage drop across any element is the current passing through that element multiplied with the impedance of that element. So, we will have V out of S equal to I S multiplied with 1 over S C. See, the current passing through this capacitor is I S as all the three elements are present in series and the impedance of this capacitor is 1 over S C. So, I S multiplied with 1 over S C will be the voltage drop across this capacitor and hence V out of S will be equal to I S multiplied with 1 over S C. And this is our second equation, which is the node voltage equation. Now, as we have these two linear equations, we can now draw the signal flow graph of this electrical network. And we know that a signal flow graph consists of nodes and branches, and the nodes represent the variables. And in an electrical network, the variables are the voltages and the currents. And in this network, we have two voltages V i of S, V out of S and one current which is I of S. So, in the signal flow graph representation of this network, we will have three different nodes. The first node will be V I of S, which is the input voltage. This node will be V out of S, which is the output voltage. And this node will be I of S, which is the branch current. Now, if we observe this branch current equation, which is I S equal to V I S over R plus S L, minus V out S over R plus S L. We can see that this equation relates this node I S with this node V I S and this node V out of S. We can see that I S equal to V I S multiplied with 1 over R plus S L plus V out S multiplied with minus 1 over R plus S L. In this way, we have satisfied this first equation. We will now move on to the second equation, which is V out S equal to I S multiplied with 1 over S C. We can see that this equation relates this node I S and this node V out of S. And we can see V out of S is equal to I S multiplied with 1 over S C. And this is the complete signal flow graph of this electrical network. And we have drawn this by the use of these two equations. Now, as we have the signal flow graph of this electrical network, we can now apply the Mason's gain rule in order to find out the overall transfer function. So, firstly, we have to calculate the forward path gain, which is the product of these two branch gains, which is 1 over R plus S L multiplied with 1 over S C. Now, we have to calculate the loop gain. There is only one loop present in this signal flow graph and the loop gain will be the product of these two branches. It will be equal to minus 1 over R plus S L which is the branch gain of this branch multiplied with 1 over S C which is the branch gain of this branch. 
Now we will calculate the determinant of SFG which is delta equal to 1 minus of all the individual loop gains. In this signal flow graph, we have only one loop having gain minus 1 over R plus SL multiplied with 1 over SC. So we will have delta equal to 1 minus of minus 1 over R plus SL multiplied with SC plus 0. As we do not have any non-touching loops in this signal flow graph, the gains of all the non-touching loops will be equal to 0. Solving this, we will have the determinant equal to 1 plus 1 over R plus SL multiplied with SC. Now lastly, we will calculate the associated path factor del1 which is equal to 1 as we do not have any isolated loop in this signal flow graph. Now we will apply the Mason's gain formula in order to calculate the overall transfer function. We will have V out S over V I S equal to P1 multiplied with del1 over delta. And now if we put all these values in this equation, we will have V out S over V I S equal to 1 over R plus SL multiplied with SC over 1 plus 1 over R plus SL multiplied with SC. The forward path gain P1 is 1 over R plus SL multiplied with SC. The value of associated path factor is equal to 1 and the value of determinant of SFG is 1 plus 1 over R plus SL multiplied with SC. Now if we take the LCM in the denominator, we will have V out S over V I S equal to 1 over R plus SL multiplied with SC over R plus SL whole multiplied with SC plus 1 over R plus SL multiplied with SC. We can see that this term in the denominator and this term will get cancelled and we will have V out S over V I S equal to 1 over S squared multiplied with SC plus R S C plus 1. And this is the overall transfer function of this series RLC network. And we have calculated this by modeling this network into its equivalent signal flow graph and then by applying the Mason's gain rule. So I hope you are getting the process of converting a network into its equivalent signal flow graph that is the modeling of electrical network. In the upcoming lectures, we will discuss more complicated networks and we will try to model them into their equivalent signal flow graphs. Now I want you all to go through this lecture one more time. And then after that, I will give you one homework problem. Try this problem on your own and if you are able to do it, let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.